So this week we started talking about chapter 25 and this chapter is about electric currents and resistance. So on Monday we introduced a new concept, current. We said if you connect a battery to a closed circuit, there is like a flow of, a ch flow of charge and we can utilize this flow of charge for things like uh, lighting a lamp and we define the current as dq dt and its unit was like coulomb per second or ampere we said for current to exist there has to be an electric field and you know currents are inside metals or conductors most of the time so there has to be an electric field inside the conductor inside. in case there is a current so this is important because we have stressed that in static situation, electric field was zero inside metals. So we defined Ohm's law, which was kind of like an empirical law. The current you have in a circuit or in a wire was proportional to voltage. And this proportionality constant or inverse of this proportionality constant was resistance or V was equal to I times R. We said this resistance IV curve like uh, which we called IV curve, things like this, was linear for ohmic resistors. But we also said that a lot of resistors are not like that. And uh, we use these things in like diodes or transistors. For a given current and a resistance, there's like a, a related voltage or voltage drop from the resistor from the, like this start from, start before the resistor measure the voltage after the resistor measure, measure the voltage the difference in the voltage is voltage drop and it is equal to vab if you call it vab it's equal to i times r so we introduced something called resistivity and resistivity was like a related to resistance we showed resistivity with rho and resistance with r and if you have a system or like a wire with length l and cross-sectional area A, we said resistance was equal to resistivity times L over A. And its unit is like ohm meter. Uh, and of course, resistance has like unit of ohm. And inverse of resistivity, we called conductivity. We said it's just generally temperature dependent. And finally, we introduced uh, electric power, like for a charge flow of Q, we said if there's like a voltage, this is the energy. And if you say, if you take uh, the time derivative of this energy, you have power, which is IV, and you could put this in different forms, like P is equal to IV, I square R, or V square R. Okay, we introduce alternating current. We said current could be static and constant in time but also it could be like alternating in time and we call this alternating current, not surprisingly. And we said most of the electricity we utilize is a uh, current of this form and the corresponding, corresponding voltage is also um, alternating in time and the power is also alternating in time. And we introduce things like root mean square, like average value of square of current square root or average value of voltage squared square root and we call them effective values if you like. so macroscopically we said <clears throat> current was non-zero if and only if the electric field was non-zero inside the metal and we said we could introduce something called current density it was the density of current or we can think of it in the opposite way. We can say that if there's like a cross-sectional area and there are like these currents passing through this area, if you integrate this area, which is like a vector, because we know area is a vector, there's like an orientation with the vector of this current, which is like a dot product here, you get the total current. So, and we related this J, which we showed the current density with J to microscopic velocity of electrons, which we call drift velocity in this form. Vector J was equal to charge minus E 
density of these charge carriers and then uh, drift velocity. From this, you could actually obtain things like this. J was actually related to electric field. Like this is what we started with. E was non-zero if and only if I was non-zero or opposite way. So J was equal to some sigma times E. This is sometimes called uh, Drude, I think, or like maybe another way of saying Ohm's law, I think. So this is the first suggested problem. So a hollow cylindrical resistor with inner radius R1 and outer radius R2 and length L is made of material whose resistivity is rho. Show that the resistance is given by this form for current that flows radially outwards. That's a little bit strange. It flows like this. So you could think like this, but it's actually flow out, outward. And there's a hint, divide the resistor into concentric cylindrical shells and integrate. So A, so I want to choose a concentric shell as the problem suggests. Let me choose something like that. Okay. It's like this. And something like that. And I want to write the resistance of this little shell. So it's called dr is equal to resistivity times the length, which is dr in this case, the radius, and divide this by with the area, which is two pi r times l. Okay. So if we sum over all these little shells, we get the total resistance. So let's do that. R is equal to, let's take the constants outside, rho over two pi L integral dr over R from R1 to R2. And this is equal to rho divided by two pi L ln of R from R1 to R2. And this thing is equal to rho over two pi L times ln R2 or R1. And it says B, evaluate the resistance for such a resistor made of carbon whose inner and outer radii, radii are one millimeter and 1.8 millimeter and whose length is 2.4 centimeters. Okay, there's like some, some, more, some more information. So let's do this, B, so R is equal to, rho is 15 times 10 to minus five ohm meter divided by two times pi times L. L is what length is 2.4, this is time 2.4 times 10 to minus two meter. And this is LN, uh, outer is 1.8, inner is 1.0. Okay, let me calculate that. This is 0.58 times, okay, 10 to the minus five, 10 to, minus, 10 to the um, minus three. Okay, the unit is easy to check, it's just ohm. Or this is again, like, let's do it for, and this thing is here. Okay. And see what is the resistance in part B for current parallel to axis. So now it's asking for a current like this. I can also do this. So R, now the cross section is constant, so no need for integration. It's like resistivity, air, like length, 
um, divided by area, which is pi r2 squared minus r1 squared. And this should be equal to, okay, let's do this. 15 times 10 to the minus five palm meter times L is equal to what? 2.4 times 10 to the minus two meters divided by pi, okay, I'm not gonna write r2 squared minus r1 squared. So let's do this 5.7. Okay, now I need to do the powers times 10 to minus three. You can see this resistance is much almost or an order of magnitude larger than this resistance, which makes sense to me. Okay, any questions? Okay, next. Clear this. So an electric power plant can produce electricity at a fixed power P, but the plant operator is free to choose the voltage V at which it is produced. This electricity is carried as an electric current I through a transmission line with resistance R from the plant to the user, where it provides the user with electric power P prime. Show that the reduction in power delta P is equal to P minus P prime due to the transmission losses is given by delta P, P square R over V squared and B in order to reduce the power losses during the transmission should the operator choose V to be as large or as small as possible. So the, okay, maybe I can go ahead and start A. So output, let me call it output, is given by some power and some current and operator is free to choose whatever voltage. And power is now, okay. These are the variables from the output and I need to write an expression for P. Okay, P is equal to what? I times V. Let's see which one should I choose. I can choose this one, this one, or this one. I want to choose this one, I times V, because P, I and V are known. So from this, if I want to find the current output from the power plant, it's going to be P over V. Now this current is going to flow through the wire and it's going to give rise to some loss, which is shown by P prime. And this loss is due to the wire, which is the resistance is known. So now I can use for this, I can use this one, this one, or this one. But since I know I, I'm going to use this one. So this should be I squared times R, but I just found an expression for I here. So this should be equal to P square over V square times R. So, and I can also write, right, that's, that's amount of loss, if you like, maybe I can write it like, I can write it like loss to be a little bit more precise. And when it reaches, uh, okay, this is the output. This is the power that reaches to the user. Then delta P is just this amount. So I will just write it like P loss is equal to P minus P prime, which is equal to P square R over V squared. And B is saying that in order to reduce power losses during transmission, should the operator choose V to be as large or as small as possible? So, okay, 
since p loss is proportional to one over v squared, and if v is, okay, maybe I can like, p loss is small for v large, okay? So operator should choose v as large as possible. Okay, this is 85. The Tevatron accelerator at Fermilab, Illinois, is designed to carry an 11 milliampere beam of protons traveling at, a, at very nearly the speed of light, which is 3.0 to minus 8 meter per second, around a ring 6,300 meters in circumference. Okay, that's a circumference. And question is, how many protons are there in the beam? Right? So let me just, okay, this thing is like circular, but I want to think of it like a cube like this. So this length is given to be 6,300 meters. And here there's some cross-section area, I. Now I want to write a current, an expression for current density, which I know, and it's equal to charge of the charge carrier, density of carriers, how many carriers do I have, and their velocity, V, which we call drift velocity previously, but this case, there's no drift. So I'll just call it V. And I need to write an expression for N, N is density. So this should be equal to N divided by volume, right? So this N is total number of protons and this V is equal to volume and which is equal to, maybe I can simplify this a little bit. It should be equal to volume is area times the length. So this should be equal to A times L, right? So this is one. And two, I know I, I'm assuming the uh, constant current density. So it's going to be equal to area times current. And this I is known, right? This is 11 milliampere. So then this one is equal to area times charge times, okay, this charge is plus E exactly like elect electron, but the positive side, right? So then I will put E here. N is number and divide this thing with area times length and divide this, uh, multiply this thing with velocity, which is given. So these areas nicely cancel Okay, this can, can kind of looks like L, but it is not, it's E. So then what do we have here? Okay, so we are asked what N is, and I can solve this for N. N is equal to, what is it? Um, L times current divided by charge of an electron times velocity, which are all known. So let me write these things. L is 6,300 meters times current is 11 times 10 to the minus three. And this is, okay, this is meter, this is, Ampere, 
divide this thing with electron charge, which is 1.602 times 10 to minus 19 Coulomb and multiply this with speed of light, which is like 3.0 times 10 to the eight meter per second. So units meter meter ampere is Coulomb per second. So Coulomb, Coulomb, and this second is going with this second. And I had something dimensionless, which should be that way because this is number, number of particles should not have any dimension. So I multiply these numbers and see, okay, let me try to write it here. Okay, this is equal to, this is 14.4 times, okay, this 10 to the three, 10 to three, times 10 to the 11 protons. So I think I copied both of them, but I think we don't need that problem. So I only uh, think about nine to three. So the cross section of a portion of wire increases uniformly as shown in this figure here. So it has the shape of a truncated cone. The diameter at one end is A and the other end is B. And the total length along the axis is L, L, A, and B. If the material has resistivity rho, determine the resistance R between the two ends in terms of A, B, L, and rho. And assume that the current flows uniformly through each section and that the taper is small. That means B minus A is much less than L. Okay, let me go ahead and start. So the cross section, so okay, we are, I think we are familiar with, is changing. So we can just choose an infinitesimal cross section, which will be kind of like constant. And it is, okay. Let's say this uh, portion is at X and its width is going to be DX and it has some area, let me call this R of X. So the radius of this, I can de determine R of X. So if X is equal to zero, it should be A over two. And if X is equal to L, it should be B over two. To achieve that, I need to have something like this. Uh, B over two minus A over two times X over L, okay? Now resistance, let me write it like dr is equal to. The resistivity is given to be rho. The area is Okay, pi, okay, area should be not like, it's like length. Length is the X and area is what? Area is pi R of X squared. So if I integrate this then I have R is equal to rho divided by pi it's equal to from, okay, x is equal to from zero to L. I have dx and I have what? I have one over something, which is square of like this a over two plus b minus a over two x over L and square of this guy. And if I take this integral, it's again elementary, rho of pi minus one divided by, okay, I'm not going to write this whole thing. So let me copy, copy, 
paste. Okay, if I take the derivative, minus one is gone. There is like a B minus A over two. So to get rid of that, I need to put like two L divided by B minus A. And the integral limits are from zero to L. So then resistance is going to be equal to, um, to, okay, maybe I can keep the form. Rho over pi on the brackets. If I put zero, I will get one over A over two. And if I put L, I will get minus one over, I think it will be B over two. But you should check, I think it should be like this, times two L divided by B minus A. So this thing then is equal to rho over pi, okay, B minus A over two divided by uh, B minus A, not two, A times B over, maybe I can take this two outside, okay. This two, you multiply. Okay, this is four. And this is equal to two times L over B minus A. Cancel this with this. And this with this. And the result is nicely, I think four times rho times L over pi times A times B. 